Welcome MTG Burgeoning viewer. This is a quick message to remind you of our rewards for September. If we get at least 30 subscribers during the month of September, then one subscriber will be chosen at random and receive an entire set of Modern Horizon art cards. Also, any subscriber who comments on every MTG Burgeoning video during the month of September will become eligible for the October Pack Wars. On October 1st, a list will be compiled of all subscribers that commented on every MTG Burgeoning video released during September. From this list, one subscriber will be chosen at random to participate in the October Pack Wars for free. If the chosen subscriber is already a Pack Wars supporter or member, then that subscriber will receive a second spot in the October Pack Wars. So be sure to leave a comment and prepare for war. We're MTG Burgeoning. This is Build a Deck Tuesday. Subscribe now and join the movement. Hello folks, welcome back. MTG Burgeoning here and you are back with us on Build a Deck Tuesday and here we are going to add the last of our deck, excluding our mana base, to our Zaxara the Exemplary build. If you're just tuning in to us now, you can click on any of the links below to get a more detailed description of how we decided to put this deck together and some of the things that we're talking about with the focus and theme of this Zaxara the Exemplary deck. Okay, so to get everyone caught up, here are the cards that have already been included. These are the first 40 cards of our Zaxara the Exemplary deck. Unbound Flourishing, Doubling Season, Branching Evolution, Prime Evil Bounty, Simic Ascendancy, Salvala, Heart of the Wilds, Pemmin's Aura, Krufix, God of Horizons, Corpse Jack Menace, Retribution of the Ancients, Villainous Wealth, Finale of Revelation, Torment of Hailfire, Hydroid Crisis, Exsanguinate, Walking Ballista, Animist's Awakening, Curse of the Swine, Voracious Hydra, Stroke of Genius, Profane Command, Pull from Tomorrow, Primordial Hydra, Stone Coil Serpent, Blue Sun's Zenith, Erebus's Intervention, Hungering Hydra, Steelbane Hydra, Altered Ego, Vastwood Hydra, Lifeblood Hydra, Mist Cutter Hydra, Hooded Hydra, Gadwick the Wizened, Thassa's Intervention, Open into Wonder, Wildest Dreams, Black Sun's Zenith, Death Denied, and Gelatinous Genesis. So the first 40 cards included in this deck, 30 were X spells, as that is the focus and theme of this Zaxara build. So we've got two dozen cards left to add before we before we put together our mana base. So let's get to those cards right now. Here are the last 24. Colonian Hydra. We knew this was coming. As soon as we finished with the X spells, we knew Colonian Hydra was on the way. Three and two green comes into play with four plus one plus one counters on it, and it has that wonderful evasion of trample. And whenever Colonian Hydra attacks, we double the number of plus one plus one counters on each creature we control. And hopefully, we'll have a lot of them. Colonian Hydra is number one. Next up, a sweet admission from Core 2021, Garrick's Uprising. For two and a green, we get an enchantment, and then when it enters the battlefield, if we control a creature with power four or greater, which we should, we draw a card. Creatures we control have trample, which is important because the creature tokens created by Zaxara 
do not have trample. They are evasionless. And whenever a creature card with power four or greater enters a battlefield under our control, we draw a card. Garrick's Uprising is number two. Next up, Strionic Resonator. For two, we cast this spell, and for another two, when tapping it, we copy target triggered ability we control. Great card. We can use this with so many other synergies in our deck. Strionic Resonator is a great number three. Next up, let's talk about some protection. And of course, that comes in the form of Lightning Greaves. Our format's most popular equipment, two to cast, zero to equip. Equip creature has haste and shroud. Zach Sauer will most likely be carrying the Greaves every chance we can possibly give it to him. Continuing with the trend of, prote of protection, we come up with asceticism. The Scars of Mirrodin Rare is three and two green, and creatures we control have hexproof. It says, can't be the targets of spells or abilities, but this was before Hexproof was keyworded. And we can also tap one in a green to regenerate target creature. Very valuable card to help protect our creatures. And the potential for politics is there as well. Next up, let's put some, uh, let's put some tutors to our advantage. And the first one, of course, is the best one, Demonic Tutor. One in a black. Take a card from our library, put it into our hand. Best tutor in the format. Next up, how about a Diabolic Intent? How about a Demonic Tutor that just costs an additional sacrificial creature? So for the same cost of a Demonic Tutor, we have to sacrifice a creature, which we should have plenty of token creatures to sacrifice. We search our library for a card and put it into our hand. Demonic Tutor, number two. All right, so now we're moving right along here. Number eight, let's get some card draw. Ristic Study. Yeah, we're playing blue. It's going in there. Two in the blue. Are you going to pay one for that? Are you going to pay one for that? Are you going to pay one for that? Because if you don't, then we're going to draw a card. Ristic Study comes in at number eight. Speaking of playing blue, so we're going to include blue spells that have blue on the casting cost. There's our Cyclonic Rift. Yep, we gotta put it in there. If it's overloaded, we are set up with such a great advantage. It's powerful. We include it. Number 10. The Yozolith. This legendary artifact from the Coria Lair of Behemoths costs only one. And whenever a creature we control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. So for the purposes of this deck, these are going to be our bevy of plus one, plus one counters. At the beginning of combat on our turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, we may move all counters from it onto target creature. Notice the text, it says onto target creature. So from the world of politics, this could be one of our opponent's creatures, but most likely it'll be one of ours. And the Ozolith is in. Next up, a couple pieces of additional removal. Now, a lot of our removal came in the form of our X spells. Here are a couple of pieces of removal to round out the first 12 additions in this video for our deck. These are a little more versatile. They offer a little more flexibility. Assassin's Trophy. Destroy target permanent on opponent controls. We'll gift them with a free basic land if they have one in their deck. Getting rid of a problematic or troublesome permanent is a lot more valuable than giving them than giving an opponent an extra basic land. Assassin's Trophy number 11. And our last piece of removal before we move on to our 12 ramp cards. Beast Within. Destroy target permanent, its controller creates a 3-3 green beast creature token. So similar to the basic land that's gifted by Assassin's Trophy, a 3-3 green beast creature token is of little consequence to us when we're able to remove a problem permanent. So those are the, the first, those are the next 12 that we added to this Zaxara build. The last 12 are going to be strictly mana ramp and things that can help us get ahead of our opponents from a mana standpoint. And of course, if we're talking ramp, 
we're talking Soul Ring. Best artifact in the format. Cost one, gives us two. Soul Ring is an easy number one. Second best artifact in our format, Arcane Signet. Taps, costs two, no restrictions, no limitations. Tap to add one mana of any color in our, in our commander's color identity. Number three, we have a Thought Vessel. It only gives us one colorless for the casting cost of two, but it eliminates our maximum hand size. We have the propensity to draw um, an enormous amount of cards in our hand. In our, we have the. Uh, let's try this again. Number three, Thought Vessel. It only taps for one, and its casting cost is two, but we have no maximum hand size. We have a lot of draw card spells in our deck, and it would be a shame to have to discard down to seven at the end of our turn. Thought Vessel makes sure that we don't have to do that. Next ramp spell we have is Farseek. For one and a green, we search our library for an island or a swamp. We're not going to look for plains, we're not looking for mountains, and it doesn't let us look for a forest. We put that onto the battlefield tapped. So this could be a Shockland. This could be a potential Triome. If we add that, if we add the Zagoth Triome to the mana base here, Fireseek gets us a land. Rampant Growth is next. For one in the green, we search our library for a basic land, put it into play tapped. Number six, Bloom Tender. For one in the green, this Elf Druid is a 1-1, one, one, but its text is so much more valuable. We can tap it, and for each color among permanents we control, we add one mana of that color to our mana pool. So this can give us between one and three. Blue Tender is in. Next up, we have a pair of very popular green spells. Kodama's Reach for two and a green. We search our library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into our hand. Although this is the exact same thing that Cultivate does, which is our next card, Kodama's Reach gets top billing because it was printed first. And there's our Cultivate. Exact same thing as Kodama's Reach. And they're both in the deck. Next spell up is Growing Rites of Itlamok. This legendary enchantment from Ixalan is two and a green, and when it enters the battlefield, we look at the top four cards of our library. We may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand. We put the rest on the bottom of our, of our library in any order. And at the beginning of our end step, if we control four or more creatures, which should not be a problem, we transform Growing Rites of Itlamok. And when we do that, Growing Rites of Itlamok transforms into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. And what this is, is pretty much a better version of Gaia's Cradle. This can tap to add a green to our mana pool for each creature we control, or it can just tap for a green. Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. And we're nearing the end of our ramp spells. We're down to our last three. Next up is our Chromatic Lantern. For three, this gives us one mana of any color, and it also gives lands we control tap add one mana of any color. Helps with mana fixing, helps with mana smoothing. Next up is a Thran Dynamo. Four to, four to cast, we tap it and get three colorless mana to our mana pool. No restrictions, no limitations. Very, very unheralded card. And this is a great inch. Uh, this is a great artifact to help us boost the value of our X spells. And our last, our twenty-fourth and last card to add to this Zaxara the Exemplary deck is Mana Reflection. Finally reprinted all from all the way from whence it originated in Shadowmoor. Mana Reflection 4 and 2 green. If we tap a permanent for mana, it produces twice as much. The text on this card is very important because it doesn't say land. It says if we tap a permanent. So if we just slide Mana Reflection out of the way here for a moment 
And if we look at some of the permanents we have down here that we can tap for mana, Thran Dynamo gives us six. Can you imagine what Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun, or a Gaia's Cradle would give us? Bloom Tender gives us double. How about a Soul Ring that taps for four? Card 24, Mana Reflection. And that is the totality of our non-land cards for this Zaxara the Exemplary build. Next time we come back, next Tuesday, we are going to install the mana base. We are going to talk about our wish board and or our maybe board and or our sideboard, some honorable mentions that did not make the deck. And once we have that, we will complete our Zaxara the Exemplary deck, and then it will be ready for gameplay and play testing. So leave some comments below as to what mana you would like to see included into the deck. We're looking at lands here. Everything else is all set. What lands are we going to include? This is MTG Burgeoning. Go forth and enjoy your day. Want to become a Pack Wars combatant? Four easy steps. Step number one. Click on the link below in the description or go to www.buymeacoffee.com slash MTG Burgeoning. Step number two, select either membership or support. Membership will enroll you into Pack Wars for $5 each month. Support will cost $5 for one month. Step number three, complete payment information. The name you use will appear on the site. Use your real name, use your YouTube handle, or use no name at all and be anonymous. Be sure to include your email address in the information. Step number four, most importantly, Prepare for war.